Saturday night still all right for fighting for me, damn it. No matter how much you change the uh, tune of Collision, it will still be Elton John, in my opinion. But welcome everybody back to the Hit in the Turnbuckle podcast. Of course, we're talking about AEW Collision, uh, which aired alongside SummerSlam. So no pressure AEW to deliver a uh, show there. But it is in their home away from home, really. Uh, in Texas. Uh, they love it there. It was a very good, uh, from the eSports Stadium in Arlington, uh, Texas, actually, uh, this one. It's quite an exciting show. We'll get straight into it. Now, the patriarchy um, started the show. Christian is still one of the best, um, doing his best work in his career, I think, so far. He wants to get out of the hellhole that is Texas quickly. Um, you know, the patriarch said four weeks ago they'd become exact they'd become the trio champions. And that's exactly what they did. And it was quite interesting because he was saying about our holding the belts up. Uh, where are your titles? Uh, and you know, but, but also he said, if you will, a belt holds up your pants or to discipline a naughty child. And as he was giving the, the titles to Nick Wayne, um, prodigy, cool which is the finisher. But he did not give birth to the prodigy. So the Christian gives the other title to Mama Wayne. And Christian put and Killswitch put his hand on Christian's shoulder at this point. And just when you think Killswitch is going to do something to Christian, finally he had had enough. Because he was quite insinuating there that Killswitch was the naughty child in the family when he wasn't. But nevertheless, it was Malachi Black. And it was, of course, Brody Lee, who Christian called Jelly Roll. I think that has something to do with some slam, but nevertheless. Uh, Christian says, basically, the House of Black is no longer trios, so they can no longer be number one contenders. And, of course, that Man of Malachi has not lived up to his hype. So maybe he come out looking for some fatherly advice from Christian. Three on two. Christian then said, hold on, what, what are you thinking, Malachi? And he said this. And as he said that, the lights go out and then the lights come back. Buddy Matthews had returned. And as the patriarchy go to get out of the way, here is the bang, bang gang. And Christian has left, Nick, at this point, Christian's left Nick Wayne to his own devices. He gets high kicked by Malachi Black. He gets a pop up knee by Matthews. He gets a cannonball uh, by Brody. And at that point, then the House of Black and the Bang Bang Gang are discussing things in the ring as the patriarchy uh, leave the building uh, at this point or scramble, which could set up an interesting triple threat trios match for those tiles the Bang Bang Gang versus the House of Black versus the Patriarch. I mean, I remember rightly, the House of Black had to relinquish the title due to injury, if I'm right. Or maybe they lost the titles. I can't quite remember. It was a while ago, damn it. Uh, but great to see Buddy Matthews back uh, in AEW. He is a tremendous, tremendous talent. Um, what I think it would be good to have a triple threat trios match, and that would do really, really well. The Patriarchy Christian Cage is still one of the best in the business at doing this right now. Um, love him. I love his work. The turn from kill switch will definitely be coming. It's just a matter of when and how they go about doing it. But I'm intrigued and interested to see it when it happens because it should actually be quite a good uh, little turn from kill switch when it finally happens. But nevertheless, Patriarchy have some enemies for the trios championships. And I really am looking forward to what's hopefully going to be a triple threat trios match. Could it even be all in uh, coming up? Um, one quick bit of news that we need to discuss uh, from AEW this week, and I don't think I covered it off on the Dynamite review because I think it happened after. Britt Baker, uh, suspended by AEW, or at least was suspended by AEW for an altercation involving her, MJF, and Alicia Attal, which is MJF's um, other half. Now, listen, we always say reports are reports. You, you're never going to know the true facts on this, but what's... What we do know, I'm not going to talk about the other crap that we've been hearing online about what happened. What we do know is apparently Britt Baker said something in the women's locker room. Alicia Attal heard it, said something to MJF. MJF come back and confronted Britt Baker. That's what we know. That's kind of the gist of it. There was other stuff that MJF punched a wall before he went out with Osprey. Look, let, let's not even go there. From Let's just know with kind of what the facts are, which is there was an altercation between those and Britt Baker got suspended. Now, 
as of today, when we're recording this viewing on Sunday, um, Britt Baker is still scheduled to take on uh, Mercedes Monet at uh, All In uh, in a couple of weeks at Wembley Stadium. So as far as we're concerned, any suspension from Britt Baker will be done by then. The issue could be is whether or not that changes the booking of that match at Wembley Stadium between Britt Baker and Mercedes Monet. We'll have to wait and see. And again, you're going to get a lot of rumours and a lot of I just, bullshit, really, uh, as to what the deal is between those. But at the end of the day, it looks as though it's been dealt with by the disciplinary committee of AEW, and we'll see Britt Baker back maybe this week, maybe next week. But let's you know, let's not jump to any conclusions here. What I would say, however, is it's really not good press for AEW to be having, especially after what happened at Alden last year with Punk, and there, there just seems to be no end to drama in the AEW locker room. You know, it, it goes a bit, it goes a bit quiet for a while, and then something happens and. It's frustrating to see when you just want the guys to go out there and put on a show and whatever has been said has been said, but I just wish that we didn't have to hear about it either because it just makes situations from the fans' perspective a hell of a lot worse. So, you know, but it's been done. She's been suspended and she should be back in time for all in against the match against Mercedes. Anyway, on to more pressing situations and to more things I want to talk about. Um, the first match of collision was the premier athletes, uh, Davari and Kyle. Oh, I can never remember. Oh, T Davari and Nice against the hologram, the ever impressive hologram and Mystico. Uh, really good match to get the fans going. The, the, the collision fans, you know, I don't know, they may not be different to dynamite fans, but they really seem to love the Mystico hologram, even as a singles, but they really love them as uh, together. The, the premier athletes were perfect competitors for these two here. Um, and actually, Nice's finisher got the loudest reaction, although it didn't actually win the match. Uh, the 450 from uh, to 450, I think, from Hologram to Davari, um, won the match for Hologram and Mystico. Um, but nevertheless, um, very, very good uh, encounter, great tag team match, good way to get the crowd going. I mean, the opening bit did as well with the return of um, Buddy Matthews, but. You know, in terms of matches to get the crowd on their feet, you had you know, four guys that can really get the niece and Davari who are technically in high flying against basically two luchas, which is always going to be high flying. Great compliment of styles, really exciting way to start the match and uh, or start the show, really. And a good win, uh, kind of predictable in terms of you didn't want you didn't think hologram was going to lose the match this quickly, especially after being promoted so heavily from AEW before he got there. So Nevertheless, great victory. Nice little way to start the match. Uh, and then Mariah May uh, joins commentary. Mariah May obviously getting ready for her match at All In. Uh, London's own Mariah May, should I say, getting rid of, getting ready for her uh, match with her former protege, uh, not former protege, former teacher uh, or love interest. I don't know what you want to call it. Tony Storm. The first thing she says is, can I speak now, bitch, uh, to Tony Schiavone as Tony, as Tony Storm hits the ring, but before she even starts to hit the ring, she makes a beeline for the commentary box and they start brawling and Christopher Daniels has to intervene and basically tries to bring May out to the back and Tony Storm dies off the entrance and the brawl <laughs> continues. And then Tony Storm's opponent decides I'm going to attack Storm from behind and rolls her in the ring. I think it was Chanel something or other. Um, and she hits with a pump kick. Storm ducks a clothesline. She is a German suplex uh, into the corner. The running hip attack. Mariah Mays watching from the ramp as Storm then hits Storm Zero uh, for the victory. It was as simple and as quickly as that uh, to be done, which you would have expected anyway. The brawl was the thing that made it. And it, again, this one has got that really good story behind it. We had... You know, Mariah May was always in the wings of Tony Storm. She was like Tony Storm's, I suppose, say stalker to me, but she was like always all over her. And then the moment Mariah May gets the shot at the gold, she just turned straight on her as if to say, this was my plan all along. And it's made for great viewing between these. So Tony Storm's still doing some fantastic work as a character. Mariah May's doing some really good work as well. So this is shaping up to be a great contest for the uh, AEW Women's Championship. And uh, 
at All In. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. It's been a great story. Two great, great wrestlers as well. Two great characters, and they've played their characters brilliantly. This has got all the elements that make up a great match. Two great wrestlers with great characters and a good, to great story that's gone around it really makes intriguing viewing. And that's something that, you know, I've mentioned this quite a few times. AEW has been slated about recently, or it's been slated about since it's got going, that just hasn't had the storylines. Well, these are the storylines. These matches are all in. I think a lot of them have a storyline segment involved. So really, really good work from AEW on that. And I've really enjoyed the Tony Storm or Iron May sort of, you know, relationship to, you know, cut, you know, to, to kind of betrayal. And now we've got the, the match are all in to look forward to as well in just a few short weeks' time. Excellent stuff from AW there. Uh, Carl Fletcher and Brian Cage, I mean, whew, this was, you know, I can't wax lyrical enough about Brian Cage. I, I really can't. And my only criticism of this match is it was eight minutes. It, it could have gone 28, 38, I, I, and I would have loved it. It was so good. Brian Cage is one of the most underutilized wrestlers on AEW. I mean, you can argue there's quite a lot of them, but this guy, Lance Archer, Brian Cage, are two you know two guys in particular who are just so good. They're big guys, but they can move. Brian Cage does fucking shooting star presses for Christ's sake. He is so so good, and. It, to compliment him, he had a lightweight Carl Fletcher who he could throw around. But at the same time, Carl Fletcher's got some strength as well. Really good match. There was one horrible landing on this, which was uh, Cage has Fletcher on the top rope and he tries a spinning power slam. And it was a hell of a sick landing on it. But the bit more impressive thing ever was that uh, Carl Fletcher wins with the tombstone to Brian Cage. He's got him up for a tombstone, hits the tombstone and won. Um, as I said, it was an eight-minute match. He did have a commercial as well, which really wasn't timed very well in this. But what I saw of the match was just so good. It should have had another at least double the time that it had. But, you know, hopefully we're setting ourselves up for another match between those two that does go longer. Carl Fletcher has also got MJF uh, this week. On Dino. We thought it was going to be for the title, but then NJF has now come out when Carl Fletcher was talking about it. Maybe Max was going to put the title on the line and MJF took the uh, microphone and said that actually, if you win, you get your shot the following week. Now, the only issue with that is that NJF may not be champion the following week. Now, I think I broke this on the Dynamite Review Show, but MJF He's facing, uh, he's going down to Revolution Pro Wrestling over at York Hall in Bethnal Green on uh, next coming Sunday, the 11th of August. And he's putting the All-American title on the line against the Revolution Pro Champion, Michael Oku. So by next week, by the time, if Carl Fletcher does beat uh, MJF uh, this week on Dynamite, by the time they go round to Dynamite again, Michael Oku maybe the All-American champion, and not MJF. So MJF's got to come out of that match unscathed against Michael Oku for that match to happen. But I tell you what, what a week that's going to be. MJF versus Cole Fletcher and an MJF versus Michael Oku are two matches that you need to go out of your way to go and see this week. I, I'm gutted that I'm missing uh, the show next Sunday at Rev Pro um, holiday. I, I'm, I'm due one, right? Uh, <laughs> But nevertheless, it's going to be a great week. And they've got some Rev Pro, just a quick they've got Trevor Lee, the former Cameron Grimes, going to be there as well. He's taking on Luke Jacobs, I think, from memory. Uh, something like that, or Colin Mill, something like that. But you, you need to, English fans, get yourself a ticket down to uh, uh, the uh, show of uh, Bethnal Green, the Revolution Pro Wrestling Show on the 11th of August. Tickets, I think, are nearly sold out. So get yourself down there if you uh, can get there. You'll have your money's worth and more. Anyway. Back to Collision. There was a little bit with Jeff Jarrett. Uh, and so showing there, Jeff Jarrett's got Brian Danielson this week on AEW Dynamite. But Jarrett's come out and said that there's no rules and he, this Wednesday. And he wants to take it back to Memphis wrestling days. Interesting. I don't know what that means. Well, I know Memphis wrestling back in the day was a pretty hard-hitting uh, territory. 
So it'd be interesting to see what Jeff Jarrett has up his sleeve on Wednesday on Dynamite on uh, TBS. TBS? Yeah, T T S TBS, guys. Warner Brothers Discovery. Um, and the other thing to remember, just have a bit of news, bro, talking about that. And again, I think I mentioned this on Dynamite, was that the exclusivity period between uh, Warner Brothers Discovery and AEW for the television rights has ended. So there's no exclude that that is now gives AEW freedom to look elsewhere for a deal on television networks. And I did cover this up on the Dynamite review. Uh, and Wednesday basically said it was bound to happen anyway. AEW will search for the best possible TV deal that they can get. So I don't think there's anything to worry about in, in that sense. It's just a case of WWE done the same, WWE done the same. I believe they, uh, with Raw, uh, they, they come out and uh, in they, they, their exclusivity period of USA and uh, that failed to get a deal and then they went to Netflix. And USA picked up SmackDown from Fox. So there you go. Not the, not the end of the world, is it? Uh, for sure. Um, do you know what? If you want a hard-hitting, triple threat style, you on collision, you look no further. Claudio Castagnoli, Tomohiro Ishii, and Lee Moriarty. The only issue with this match was the bloody commercial <laughs> break in the middle. But this was, you know, a great, great match between, you know, Claudio Castagnoli is another one. Strength and the speed. Lee Moriarty, a, a great, he's got a great sort of uh, in ring game with some high flying. And then Tommy Hiroishi, you can just chop you sh chop the shit out of you. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna say it. Um, it was hard hitting. It was quick paced. They had so much good stuff on this. Uh, Claudio Castagnoli picks up the win with the sliding European uppercut. So it does mean Lee Moriarty was a champion in Ring of Honor, the Ring of Honor pure champion, I believe. So one wonders whether Claudio Castagnoli will get a uh, Ring of Honor Pure Championship opportunity at a later date. Um, but, I mean, God, I could have watched that. I could have watched that, Carl Fletcher and Brian Cage, and I could have just watched those two matches on Collision. And that if they had just done that for the whole show, I would have been sat here a very happy per person indeed. Um, but they didn't. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, but nevertheless, great, great match between those guys. Uh, really sets up a, what will be a brilliant one-on-one -on -one if it happens between Lee Moriarty and Claudio Castagnoli. Uh, more of that, please. Women was next. Thunder Rosa against Taya Valkyrie. It's nice as it was seeing Taya Valkyrie a little bit uh, more on AW, and it was nice that it wasn't a title match because, you know, whilst we haven't seen a lot of her, you'd never imagine her just to rock up to collision and win the title with no build or anything behind it. So this these two were a good match. Um, however, there wasn't a lot to the match, really. Um, There's a bit of stalling. Johnny TV was there. Not too much really happened in this, but nevertheless, uh, Thunder Rosa picked up the victory with the Cobra Clutch, Camel Clutch combo, whatever you want to call it, and it was a very quick tap out. There really wasn't too much in between that and there's some stalling, some little bit here and there into the guard row, you know, sort of stuff that you're going to get. The actual main talking point of this was actually after that, where Thunder Rosa once again called out Diona Perrazzo for yet another match. And these two have had a feud a while now, and they've had some really good matches. And this time, Thunder Rosa wants a Texas ball rope match with Diona Perrazzo, who actually accepts it. So we're going to get to see a Texas ball rope match between Thunder Rosa and Diona Perrazzo. I don't know if it's next week on Collision. Not sure when that match is going to be. But, that match will be great. These two have, again, we're talking about great chemistry. Diana Perrazzo, Thunder Rosa, great chemistry. They don't care what match they're in. They just work very, very well. And they're two women that you can put in any match and it would work. And that's exactly what uh, AEW are doing here for sure. And I am really looking forward to that match happening. When it happens, I don't know, but I will be tuning in to watch the match, you can absolutely count your stars on that. Um, main event time, uh, Mark Briscoe, Darby Allen, and FTR against the Beast Mortos had a big win on Dynamite and the Undisputed Kingdom. Uh, really good uh, eight-man main event uh, on this. You throw some of your best wrestlers in there, you give them 20 minutes, and you see what happens. That's exactly 
what you had in this. You had it, it was a really fun main event and a lot of subplots. And Mortos was just doing Mortos. <laughs> you know what he's like. If you've seen him, you need to tune into him. He is an incredible, incredible wrestler to watch. I've loved it. But it was uh, it was a, a powerplex and a froggy bow to Tavern. The coffin drop off the top. Got the win for Briscoe Allen and FTR in it. So it was such a fun, fun, fun. Main event. Collision seems to be the show that does a lot of random stuff. But it ends up being the most fun stuff you see. And I really enjoy it. But it wasn't the end of uh, Collision at that point. Um, Dags uh, is grabbing the mic. He loves pro wrestling. He loves AEW. He has heart and soul of AEW. Wednesday, Saturday, doesn't matter. Here comes the acclaimed. Um, Cass and Max Cassidy doesn't agree with the heart and soul comment. Where was FTR when the acclaimed was fighting the Unbucks? And FTR isn't good enough to be on the show. Uh, without their buddy Darby. Uh, Bowen said he stabbed a man with scissors for this company and he doesn't give a shit about a legacy of FTR. The acclaimed are homegrown and the heart and soul of ACW and everybody loves the acclaimed. The scoreboard reads the acclaimed one FTR nil nut up or shut up and there was a big brawl to end the show. Looking at acclaimed are trying to, you know, maybe we're going to get acclaimed FTR well, we're certainly looking, they're going to get a claimed FTR feud uh, along the line. It's interesting. Um, I do, I am into that. I'm really looking forward to seeing a bit more of that. I claim to try and climb that ladder again. And I'm really impressed with their work. I wasn't, you know, as I mentioned before, Blood and Guts, I felt was like, was that, was it weak having them on it? But maybe I was wrong. Maybe, maybe it was a good thing. Maybe it catapulted the acclaimed to the level that they want to be. But look, final thoughts on Collision this week. Lots of wrestling. And bigger names than what we saw on the Rampage show that you've probably seen the review of already, which was my gripe. I didn't like that. And it seemed like the matches tonight were all building towards All In. And that there was a rhythm and a rhyme for a reason for these matches as well. And by the way, five matches on a two-hour show, some great pacing work from AW. And I mentioned this this week on Dynamite. Everything seemed to flow very, very well. Uh, and it made for great viewing. Didn't feel rushed. Yes, those are a couple of matches that could have had a bit more time, but nevertheless, really, really good. The way I'm liking how they're pacing the shows out on AEW at the minute, it doesn't feel rushed. It, you do get your stuff that you need to get in. Stories are being told. The focus is switched to all in and there's bits and pieces going on on every show, which is making it worth watching. So get watching it for sure. But guys, Great, great show on Collision. We'll be back uh, with the SummerSlam review. And like I've already said before, if you've watched the SmackDown review, I am not coming to SummerSlam alone. No, I'll be reviewing it with someone that you all may know very well to the channel. Uh, so keep an eye out tomorrow night for that. You don't want to miss that for sure. Keep it locked on our social media platforms. We are also announcing the next, the first title defense of Mark True tomorrow night. Uh, keep a lot to our social media uh, platforms for that. There'll be a video uh, that will tell you who Mark True will be facing at uh, Ignite Aftermath show. You do not want to miss that either. It is going to blow your mind who Mark True is facing Aftermath. But guys, keep it locked to HTT Buckle on uh, X, uh, Hit the Turnbuckle podcast on all social media platforms. And until then, everybody, buckle down, stay safe, good night. 